Let's implement the dividend discount model in an Excel spreadsheet. We'll start by labeling the cells. D, K, the discount rate, and V0, the intrinsic value that we're solving for. In this example, we use $2 per share for the dividend. I'm going to just show both decimal places there. We used 11% as the discount rate. I'm going to express this as a percentage. And we're trying to calculate the present value. And again, this formula is very simple. It's just the dividend, which is in cell B1, divided by the discount rate, which is in cell B2. So this shows us the calculation using the constant cash flow perpetuity. $18.18. Now let's modify the spreadsheet that we had for the constant dividend and model using Microsoft Excel the constant growth dividend model. So again, we'll start out by entering in the cell labels, the dividend to be received a year from now, the discount rate, and now we need a growth rate as well. So the dividend to be received a year from now is $2.00. The discount rate is 11%, and the growth rate that we're going to assume is 3%. And we're trying to find the value of the stock at time zero. So again, it's a simple formula here that we can uh, put into Excel. So the dividend to be received a year from now divided by k minus g. Now note that I'm putting the parentheses in here for the discount rate minus the growth rate. And you see here that our value comes out to $25 per share. So again, we'll modify the Excel spreadsheet that we had, this time for the multi-stage dividend discount model. And this is where a spreadsheet really comes in handy as you try to model this. I'm going to label the cells slightly different, and you'll see why in just a second. So we'll start out by putting the dividend for each year. So I'm going to put a year heading here. I'll put 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 to represent the columns for my dividends. So we'll start out in year 1 with a dividend of $2, in year 2, $3, in year 3, $4, in year four, five dollars, and then our five dollar and fifty cent dividend in year five. Again, I'm going to just format those to express those as dollars and cents. Now we know that beyond year five, we're going to grow dividends at a rate of three percent per year. So let's put that growth rate in of three percent, and we're going to discount all of this in an eleven percent discount rate. Now, what I have not done yet is I have not left room for my terminal value, but I'm going to put that terminal value here next to my dividends. So it's only going to, going to show up in this last row here in year five. And again, you'll see why I want to do that in just a minute. Because in this case, I'm going to put the present value of all these dividends over here in column D. Now I'm going to calculate the present value of each year's cash flows. First of all, I'm going to copy the format to these cells, since these cells are all dollar values. Okay, so now I'm going to put in the present value formulas for these cash flows. The present value is just the cash flow divided by 1 plus the discount rate raised to the power reflecting the number of discounting periods which is in the year column. Now I'm going to hit F4 to make the uh, reference to the discount rate an absolute reference since the discount rate is always in row 18. And there we have the present value of the $2 dividend to be received a year from now. Now I can just drag this down for each year and you'll see that the dividend, the present value of the dividend in year two is $3 divided by one plus the discount rate raised to the two power. Same thing goes for year three and year four. 
Now I've left year 5 blank. I'm going to go ahead and copy that formula down this time. The reason I left it blank is that we need to add the terminal value to the stock, and we haven't calculated the terminal value yet. So I'm going to hold off here and calculate the terminal value, and then I'll come back and I'll update this present value formula. The terminal value is just the dividend year 5 times 1 plus the growth rate divided by the discount rate minus the growth rate. Notice that I've been careful to put parentheses where they're necessary. And there you see the $70.81 that we had calculated previously. Now I'll go back and I'll update my present value formula to add the present value of the terminal value. And I can do this a couple of ways. Here I've gone ahead and separated this term out. But I could have done it another way, which is to just put the add the terminal value up here to the uh, to the dividend that we were calculating. So I'll show you that by deleting this present value formula, copying down the previous. So I'm going to add it here. And you'll notice that we come out with the same value of $45.29 as the present value of all cash flows received at time 5. Now to get the value of the stock then at time 0, we're just going to take the sum of all of these present values. And again we see that that value is $55.74. So again the spreadsheet, once we've set this up, we can change the dividends, we can change the growth rate, and we can change the discount rate. Now let me go ahead and make these percentages. So we'll do a little formatting there. And now we can actually play around with this and see things that are quite intuitive. What happens if we raise the discount rate to the stock? In essence, we require a higher rate of return from the stock. So I'll raise it to 12%. Once I hit enter, you'll see that the value will go from $55.74 to something lower. Again, this makes sense. When investors require a higher risk premium, they are willing to pay less for the same stream of cash flows. So I'll set that back to 11%. Now what happens if this company's dividends grow faster over the long term? So instead of 3%, what if we assume 4%? Well, we should be willing to pay more for that stock because in essence, its cash flows are going to be higher in the future. And you see the value of the stock go from $55 to $62, an increase, which again, makes intuitive sense. In the same way, we could have changed the value of any of these dividends. Suppose that, in fact, the stock didn't pay a dividend for the first couple of years. We can set these values to zero. And then, of course, all we require is that the stock pay a dividend at some point in the future. What if it starts out by paying $1 per share in year five? Well, then the value of the stock is simply the present value of all the dividends starting in year five, in this case, $8.23. This just starts to touch the surface of how easy these models are in an Excel spreadsheet and how we can play around with the parameters and change them and immediately see the change in the intrinsic value of the firm. <music>